all of you have done such an awesome job using your listening skills today. So before you go home today, I have one more announcement. Our school play is in two weeks, and I want to know who would like to try out for the lead role in the school play? Awesome. There are so many hands that are raised today. Great. You will have a You're not good enough. You can never be the star of the play. Look at you and your hair. Ew. You're right. I'm not enough. Celeste? Celeste, honey, are you okay? Why don't you want to try for the play? Celeste was too afraid to try because a monster made her not believe in herself. You see, no matter who you are or where you come from, we all have a monster or a voice that tells us that we're not enough, what we can't do or who we can't become. Mr. Byers, if everybody had a monster that tries to keep them down, what did yours say to you? Mine? Wow, that was really good. You just watched the trailer for Roderick Byers' new book, Friends with the Monster. Roderick, throughout the hour, we've been hearing uh, your story, your testimony from some of the trauma you've dealt with as a child to how you are using that to inspire others through your new book, uh, Friends with the Monster. And I want to pick up with what the child asked you in the trailer. What does your monster currently say to you? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, it, it hits me every time that, that mm -hmm. somebody asks me. Um, but, you know, when I go to these schools and I talk to these students and, you know, I usually have on a suit or something like that. And I tell them that, you know, um, I know I've done a lot of things. I know I've accomplished a lot. I played football. I've, I've done a lot of things that you may aspire to do. But even now, as the author, even now as the man that I am, sometimes I still go home and I look in the mirror and I shrink. Mm -hmm. And when I shrink, I look just like you where I'm this kid and I want to hug and I want to be told that I'm enough and I want to be told or know that I'm loved. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, my monster has evolved as I have evolved. Um, and, and that's the thing too, of where I talk about like, you know, even with success comes a different kind of monster um, where, you know, before, as I, I talk about not being able to express myself, not being able to talk about my emotions or understand my emotions. Now I can go in a room and know everything to say. I can say it very well. Um, I can have everybody there food and they'll think that I'm, you know, I have it all together when really I could be in shambles. Hmm. So, so it's, yeah. it's something you're still working through. Oh yes, absolutely. It's, uh, and I wrote the book in a way that, you know, the monster never leaves. And that's the thing about it. You know, you befriend it because you change this identity of it based on how you see it. And mm. that's how I was able to do it because, you know, at one point in time, my insecurities, the things that I struggle with, the things that I still struggle with, I still look in the mirror and I can find something that I don't like or, yeah. you know, something that I, that I wish I could change. But Tell us about the book. You use the character of a little girl, yes. although this is like your story as a young boy, but you mm -hmm. use the character Celeste, a little girl, to tell the story of how you befriend the monster. Yes. So when children read that book, what are they going to take away from it? So, you know, I wanted to write it in a way that I could tell my story, but not so that they could see me because mm. I don't want to be glorified in it. I want mm. them to take the lessons. I want to take them to take the strategies that I've discovered so that they can apply it to their own story. So it's almost like a mirror and then they, we find relatability. Um, and it's really a way that I connect with the students and they can see and know my story, but they really see themselves. And it's something that, that helps them communicate and gives them the language. Because, you know, even if you ask me right now as, a, as an adult who's done a lot of work, mm -hmm. um, how I feel, I'm going to struggle being able to fully communicate that. And so understanding where children are emotionally, um, wanting to give them something that kind of guides them and gives them direction and gives them the language to be able to process and understand and work through their emotions. And tap into how mm -hmm. they truly feel, like yes. really reaching within. You yes. also have a page that has affirmations yes. inside of the book. You told yes. me that's one of your favorite pages in the book. Yes. Why is that? Well, it's because I still use it, um, you know, and, and, and being able to speak those things um, like there's things in there that says, you know, I am enough the way that I am. Uh, mistakes help me learn and grow, you know, things like that to just help kids understand that you don't have to be perfect. Um, and that's really what I want this book to, to represent for them. And there's so many different lessons, but that page right there um, really just speaks to them and, and gives them something that they can say as their monster continues to evolve and they continue to befriend it. 
Roger, where can people purchase a copy of your book? Yeah, so people can can purchase a copy at uh, my website, which is www.thecolorfulseeds.org. Mm -hmm. um, and you can go on there and it has all the information. Um, within the next year or so, I'll probably be releasing two or three more books. I already have five that, is, that are written. Um, and oh, then nice. I'll be releasing uh, my curriculum, which I'm offering to schools now. I have workbooks, journals, all of these things that kind of tell my story and help other people. And people can also contact you on your website to book you for speaking engagements. Yes, yes, absolutely. That yes. is really good. I know that you're going to get hit up a lot after people <laughs> see this because you have such an inspiring story. And while I know that your target right now is the youth, what about adults? Because I feel like you still have... A, an inspiring story for them as well. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because the first groups of people that I worked with were all adults. Um, and we really went back to that space of, you know, childhood, because if we look at or if we're honest about, you know, where we are and the things that we deal with, they're all rooted in our childhood, most of them. And so, um, you know, right now I'm, I'm working with a few schools. We're doing professional development for their teachers, helping them deal with the monsters that, um, you know, they might face in their classrooms of just for instance, one of them might be uh, the guilt that a teacher has for spending more time with her students than she does her own children. Wow. Um, so those are some of the things that we work through. Um, I've been in corporate where I've worked with them, um, you know, in the success, that, that monster. And so um, I'm doing a lot of work and I'm targeting in the youth, but the, the, the adult groups have been powerful, very powerful. Well, Roger, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your story. We'll make sure to have all this information on our website. When we return, we're going to wrap up the show. We'll be right back. Take it.